All right, welcome to Chalk Talk. Today, we have switched it up once again, another curveball. And uh, on Chalk Talk, we have a referee. So this is the referee version, the referee segment of Chalk Talk. Uh, and we have the villain. Austin Johnson the villain. on. Austin, Basically. thanks for joining <laughs> us, man. How are you? Good, good. Austin, so listen, we've switched it up, man. We're doing, we're doing referees. And referees is one of those things that – uh, this just not easy. I've done it before. I've ran rec leagues and I've done, uh, you know, men's league and things like that. And, um, and I've been a referee and it, and it's not an easy job. Um, and then, you know, and I'm also a coach and, um, that also is not an easy, easy job. So, um, there's just two things that people on the outside looking in a lot of times there's a misconception um, that, you know, it's an easy job or, you know, people can do it better than, uh, than the people who are actually doing it. So, um, uh, I am absolutely pumped, uh, to have you on the show, not only, uh, so that you can, you know, tell us what's it like to be an official at your level, but to also mm -hmm. pick your brain, uh, as a coach, um, to an official. So, um, thanks for joining us. How's everything going for you this year? You know, I'm at the end of the season. It's been busy, as we were just talking about. Uh, I've done over 80 games between college, high school, and middle school stuff. Um, on top of, uh, I helped the rec center out in Berkeley County, scheduling refs for Inwood and Martinsburg. On top of, I work at FEMA, so I, I have a full-time job. So um, down to the wire, I think I, I got a championship game, one of the boys' championship games on Friday, maybe one other game. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm to the end. I'm pumped. It was a great season, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely wore out mentally and physically and ready, ready to go to Florida for a week. Hey, I hear that, man. You have to hit me up when you come <laughs> down here. So let's just dive into you, um, you know, as mm -hmm. a person and, and your personal journey uh, officiating uh, from start to finish. Kind of walk us through what your officiating journeys look like from the time that you started till now. Yeah, so I was actually a basketball player. Mm -hmm. um, I played, started playing when I was like eight or nine, um, progressively got better. And then uh, Tim Shirley and Kara Hessen coached the travel team. Um, and I started playing with them probably in fifth grade, and we had a lot of good talent. Um, Isaac Brown, who played at Shepard, Corey Barnett, uh, Jalen Hessen, who was a hell of a football player, Brett Gates, um, all, all Trajan Brown that played at Washington. Um, a lot of talent. Um, so that that was my thing. I loved playing the sport. Um, and then uh, I got to, I think my freshman year, I was going to go to Hedgesville. Um, that was the district I was in. And But that summer going in, uh, for one of our last tournaments, played a big tournament down, um, I think it was, it was either Myrtle Beach or one of the beaches on the coast. And, of course, like, you know, you're playing teams from Florida, New York City, teams from Texas came in and all that. Um, so it was a, it was a good experience, but I got hurt. Um, thought it was a a, a sprain wrist, whatever. Um, got clear to play football, and then uh, three games into my freshman year, um, you know, with the I think I just stiffed arm a kid, and my wrist was literally laying on my hand. So I had like a major surgery, uh, and then I had a couple other surgeries. Um, then went to get back into it, and broke another finger and then had like pins get messed up. So I gave it up. Um, I was like, yeah, like this ain't worth it. Like I, I can't move my wrist like more than, you know, I'm right hand dominant. Um, I tried, kept getting hurt. And then uh, somebody I was working at the rec center um, was like, Hey, like we need scorekeepers or whatnot. And I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Basketball. I love basketball. So I came in and uh, met Ron uh, Watkins. He was running the rec center and, uh, after like a couple of days in there scorekeeping, he pulled me in the office and he's just to get to know me. And he, I told him my background and everything. I'm like, you know, I'm thankful for the opportunity just to, you know, get around the game again. Cause you know, I love playing and I did go through a rough time, you know, not, you know, something I love to play and was looking forward to play at the high school level and, you know, possibly college. Um, he brought the idea. He goes, well, man, did you ever think about refing? And me at the time, like, I, you know, I used to be that kid. Oh, I, I hate refs. I don't want to ref, you know, <laughs> like, like I don't want to get yelled at and all that. Yeah. And uh, he talked me into it and I started uh, ref and rec league. And I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. After the first day, I fell in love with it. I told him anytime you need me, any for any age. And he would, man, he would 
put me with uh, himself or a couple other veteran guys that were in here. I got to work, you know, the little kids and then moved up to the older kids. And then, uh, you know, they hosted the quad states in here. And he would bring uh, officials he knew from Frederick. So Derek Shackelford and a couple other people that ref college ball would come in and I would get to work with them. And like, I think by like my junior, senior year of high school, I was like, man, like, I really want to do this. I want to get certified. And I did. As soon as I was 18, Ron got me in the class, um, did the class. And he gave me a bunch of opportunities, you know, starting at the middle school level. And, you know, progressed my after like two years, started doing some varsity stuff and then got put on some bigger varsity stuff. And now I, I, I do about any game for him. And then this past year, um, I got in contact with Ryan Potts, um, who's our vice president. And he got me in contact with uh, a signer that covers Division two, some Division three and uh, junior college stuff. He got in contact with me, went to a camp and got a college contract. So um, I've definitely been thankful for Ron because he's the one that gave me the opportunity. Um, he knew how much I loved the game as a player. Mm -hmm. And now I've been able to be a part of the game that I grew up loving that I can't play. Any, didn't get to play anymore because I got, you know, all these surgeries. But, you know, it's another way to give back to the game. Mm -hmm. I learned a whole different side of the game. Um, and I, I'm going to do it as long as I can, hopefully. Um, yeah. so yeah, that, that, that's been my uh, journey with it. That's awesome. So you, you started out and doing youth league and, and now you're all the way up to doing college ball. So yep. I think that's awesome. And you stuck with it and you've got some years, uh, under your belt now and, and plenty of experience. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's just talk about, um, the shortage of referees, uh, because it's just, it's something that I keep hearing about. I keep seeing, and I know that there's a shortage of referees, but how could there be a shortage of referees when there are hundreds of people in the stands, every single game referee? That's the amazing question. Isn't it? Like I go into these gyms and I mean, like you said, there's hundreds of them, there's hundreds yeah. of them on game nights. <laughs> but I only see about 20 to 30 at meetings. So it doesn't, <laughs> but, but no, man, it, it, it's, it's something uh, in our area. That's a problem, but it's across the country and it's not even just at the high school level. Like I'm learning the college ranks and the division three and Juco level are hurting. Um, Like the guy I work with, like he's, he's trying to fill 70 spots he's lost in the last two years. Um, when I started working, you know, on the local board, I'm pretty sure my first or second year, we had like 60 or more people that were registered, um, probably 50 were refing. And now I think we may be in the high 40s, but you, in that number, you got to include people who coach, like Carlton Branson. Um, there's some people that are just older that register to come to meetings and stuff, but they don't ref. So I guarantee Ron's pool is only probably 30, maybe. And that's at all levels. And then you also got to think of those 30, there's probably 10, maybe more that are first year that you can't put on these varsity games yet. Mm -hmm. So just, this is my fifth year with him. So just in five years, he's easily lost probably 20, almost 20 varsity officials or, or officials as a whole, um, just in our area. Um, mm -hmm. And it's all over. Um, so it's definitely a problem, um, even in the rec league. I mean, we can't get refs. Um, I'm trying. But it, like you said, they're all in the stands on game nights, man. Yeah. You, you, you won't have an issue finding them. But yeah. for whatever reason, they won't come out and put the stripes on. Yeah. So um, you said you lost almost 20 refs. Just Is that just from last season or is that over? A from when span? I started. From when, from when I started. You started. So five years. So, that's... So, so in a five-year span, that's how much we've lost, which is huge. Like that's, right yeah, now. almost four refs a, a year. Yeah. So right now, it, like I told Ryan Potts the other day, like people don't realize, like, we're about 10 people away from just saying, you know, screw this. Like, this isn't worth it anymore. And, you know, we would really be hurting. Like, we would – teams would have to probably reschedule games and play on days they don't want to play. Mm -hmm. um, and who knows, you know, like some areas – like, we're we're still lucky that our high school games get have three-man. 
Yeah. When I go ref with other college refs that do high school up in Pittsburgh or, you know, Jersey or DC, a lot of their high schools, unless it's like a prep school or some type of high level high school, they're still, they're doing two man on those yeah. big, which is, is tough. It's tough. Yeah. Um, so our area is still lucky. Um, but you know, if something doesn't change, you know, we, you know, it, it could get, it could get bad, especially for people like me, uh, Nick Wright, he's a younger guy, yeah. Jacob Long. There's a couple of younger guys that, you know, are climbing the ranks as well. If we start getting more and more college games, we're going to – any night we're all from college, Ron, put us on wherever. But if we yeah. keep getting more, you know, um, yeah. there might be – there's more that, you know, holes to fill. Room. So it's definitely an issue. Yeah. So uh, before I dive into the two-man and three-man, because I do want to touch on that um, because mm-hmm. that's super important because you guys have zones. Um, and mm-hmm. on the 9450 and 90, you know, yep. the big courts, um, mm-hmm. you know, having two men is, is rough. Um, so before I dive into that, let's talk about why you think you're losing four to five people a year um, over the over the span of the five years since you've been there. Why, why are people stopping rep? Is it Parents. age? Parents. 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 Age is part of it. The re like. Every year, Ron's had at least five people in his new class. Mm -hmm. So you would think if we're losing five, we're gaining five, but we're really not because half the some sometimes people do the class, they do a week, they're like, "This isn't for me," Mm -hmm. or you know, you're losing five and then you you get five from the class. Um, But it's parents, man. Um, You know, people people think there's some people are great people, coaches, parents, great. They treat us with respect. But there's a majority that look at us as a villain. That's why when you were introduced to me, the villain, you know, because you've done the coaches and whatnot. But, you know, we're really not. Um, you know, there's people that think, oh, well, they get paid to do it. You know, um, this is their job. No, like yeah. if you take what we get paid, you know, look at gas prices now, where we have to go. You know, we do camps and stuff in the summer that are three, four hundred dollars our uniform so at the end of the day like we what what we make you know as a profit if you gave somebody that and say hey you gotta get yelled at every night for three months straight they would say no yeah um so it, it's the abuse by the parents and i think it's the generation we're in of excuses um there's no more self-reflection at with players um not so much coaches but parents and players you know there's some plays bad or their team loses. It's never their fault. Never their fault. They didn't miss a free throw or miss a layup or turn it over five times. It's automatically this one travel I called Mm -hmm. or this one foul that I missed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, we're, we're high school officials and we want to be the best, but I mean, even your division one guys, I mean, they're, they're not expected to get a hundred percent. It's like in the high eighties, low nineties. So, so even in that, their grading, they're not expected to be perfect. So, you know, at the high school level or the middle school level, we're definitely not going to be perfect. We're trying to get better. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it's just the parents, man. Like, you know, we've had parents go after a ref after a game to his car. Mm -hmm. Um, We've had people. Hold on. I think I lost you for a second. You still there? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. You know, we've had people, you know, reach out to refs on social media or attack their family or things like that, you know, see them out in public and, Mm -hmm you know, to give you the middle finger or whatever, screw, you know, like, you know, leave the school, all of that. Mm-hmm. And it, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, there, there's been points in this season where I've done 11 games in a week and I'll get to the end of the week and I'll have to deal with this parent or, you know, it was a bad game or whatever. I'm like, why do I do this? Mm-hmm. But I do it because I love the game. I love mm-hmm. this community and I want to give back. But I think the main reason is these parents, man, like mm-hmm. it, it's, it's no more of, self-reflecting with the player and how are we going to make this player better? How are we going to make my kid better? You know, as a basketball player, now it's the coach's fault. It's the ref's fault. It's the principal's fault or the a- AD's fault. So I think that's the big, big problem with it, with the, how society is today and how people think that they pay five bucks to get in a game. They can say and do whatever they want. Yeah, for sure. So what do you think is the solution to that? Um, you know, because at the end of the day, if that doesn't change, what changes? Does it, does it, do you guys, you know, the refs that are coming in, they just have to be a certain breed of person. 
you know, you tell them to stop listening to them. Do you tell them to, okay, hey, just throw this person out. What do mm -hmm. you, what protections do you have as a ref? And what do you guys, the veterans tell the, the newer guys, you know, how to prepare for this stuff and, and be ready for it? So right now, Potts, uh, Ryan Potts is our vice president, Terrence Washington, Terrence Washington is our mm -hmm. president, and Ron Watkins is our assigner. Mm -hmm. They're doing a really good job at communicating with the ADs and the coaches on, you know, what they're expecting of the refs, and, but what we expect of these schools, like, you know, with game management, you know, like, you know, most schools are doing a better job, the AD coming up to us, like, hey, you know, they'll point out who the game supervisors are or whatever. There's usually cops or whatever. So that part is getting better. Um, what I think needs to happen is more of the coaches having meetings with their parents or, you know, they hear it. I know they hear it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's it's in one of these. We're in a society to where coaches can't coach the same anymore because of, you know, mommy and daddy might get mad. So if they're. They're, they become, you know, hard and like, hey, like, you know, you can't come to games or whatever. Then it's going to be at a board meeting, whatnot, lawyers and all that. But in reality, there wouldn't be a problem if we just acted with some sense and, you know, in the stands. So I really think schools leadership, it, they're, they're getting better. Um, but we really need to do maybe a little bit of a better job of being proactive. Like when we see it, address it right away, not wait until you know, one of us have to stop the game to point them out, which we're getting there. You know, we're getting there. Um, but, you know, like we tell the younger officials, one year and out the other. This is my fifth year. This is probably the first year where I haven't, like there's some nights before in my early career where I'd just be fired up. I get home, I'd just be fired up. Like I, I think I've texted Ron a couple of times. I ain't doing this anymore. <laughs> um, but it, it took time. Um, but that's what we tell the younger guys. One ear out the other. Um, do your job mm -hmm. and do the best job you can. And, you know, if you need to address it with game management or whatever, do it. You know, yeah. don't be scared to do it. Don't be yeah. scared. To, to, to handle it, but get an administrator, somebody to handle it. Yeah. Um, but it's hard because it, the, the fans have gotten worse, especially since after COVID. And we're trying to get more newer people on these middle school games or whatever. But, you know, if, it, if it's your first year and you go out and you get 20, 30 games a year and they're just these terrible experiences, yeah. you're not going to come back. So, yeah. Um, you know, I try to tell people now, I'm like, look, I used to be that. Like, I'll get calls from newer guys all the time. Like, man, screw this. I ain't doing this many more. Like, I'm selling my my gear, you know, whatnot. Yeah. And I'm just like, hey, calm down. Call yeah. me in the morning. I said, we'll, we'll talk about what happened. Yeah. So that that's a lot of it now, I think, uh, you know, because we're not perfect. You know, yeah. we, we are not perfect by any means. We are not. Yeah. Um, and just like anybody, we have a breaking point. Like yeah. maybe I, I talked back to a coach or something one time, you know, and I said something smart because I was just tired of hearing it versus just trying to de-escalate it. And yeah. I'll call the coach or whatever, you know, next day. But um, no, I think the administrators are getting better. Um, but I think we could do maybe a better job and also just promoting it with coaches promoting it. You know, yeah. I'm trying to get some high school players in here reffing. So they understand what it's like, you know, yeah. tell your mom and dad, like, hey, chill out, man. Or, you know, different things like that. But it's steps. Um, we just got to get more people to buy in for sure. No, I totally agree. Um, <clears throat> so let's dive a little bit deeper into because we talk about accountability, right? Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people don't know, players, coaches, uh, parents, is the accountability level on your end. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times. You know, you guys will make a call and if the coach doesn't agree with it or if a player doesn't agree with it, it's just a simple, you know, you can get teed up or ejected and things like that. And then we move on. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's the perception. Right. So what the people, that's what people think. 100%. Yes, exactly. So that's what uh -huh. people think. Right. So mm -hmm. you guys get graded and you get you know what I mean? But talk to us a little bit about the accountability on your end. Like if you guys make a bad call or. Um, you know, like how how do you get whether it's uh, reprimanded or or corrected or what's the teaching? Like, how does that part work so that people know? 
So it, it definitely differs uh, from college to high school. Um, but right now, high school, I mean, the standard is at an all, all-time high because every game streamed now. Mm-hmm. So, bef- like, it, that's what that's what was preached. Like, hey, like, somebody is streaming your game. So Ron or Potts or some somebody's going to be watching these games. So the streaming has really helped the raise the accountability for for referees for sure. Um, if we mess up a rule or, or you know mess up this or that, coaches will send in the clips, and you know we'll get we'll get an email or or, or whatever from Ron or or Potts going over the film or whatever, and we have meetings. Uh, we we meet once a week for. Th- two and a half months before the season going over clips of the previous year. Um, and then during the season, we meet like three or four times going over clips. So just like in a game, a player misses a shot, turns it over, whatever, we're going to miss calls. So players might have to run or something at practice, you know, at the college level, you might lose a game. You might lose a game assignment and you'll get a call five in the morning from your assigner. If you get a call from five in the morning from your college assigner, you better answer it. Cause you know, it's probably going to be bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so you might lose a game here, you know, you, you might get viewed as you're not ready to do these bigger games. You know, you might not get as, you know, um, you know, better quality matchups, you know, on the bigger nights or whatever. Um, but we, we go, we have so much training, so much, so many meetings, so many, so much film now that we can watch. Like, I've watched every varsity game, every college game, and half the middle school games I've done because I have access to it now. So, and right now we have at the high school level, um, Ken Sanders and Glenn Leonard that were around here. They were longtime refs that no longer ref anymore. Um, on the, on their own time, they don't get paid. I think they got a free polo that Potts bought them. They come to all the almost every game they can on Friday nights or whatever, and they'll have a clipboard with. You know, and they'll write notes down. They come in at halftime. They'll come in at the end of the game. So we'll know right at the end of the game, um, you know, hey, what happened here? You know, this is what I saw. Um, and even now when you with you guys live streaming games, I've gone back in halftime and went to the live stream league to go watch a couple of plays. Mm-hmm. So we are we are definitely held to a standard. And if we mess up, we're going to get lower level games because right now we don't have the numbers to – in high school, middle school to take games away or, you know, just, you know, but it, it happens in other areas. Like I know people that have lost game, like bigger games in DC or whatnot for messing up, but it, it for sure happens at the college level. So it's not like we just get to go out there and blow whatever call we want or just not show up, swallow our whistle or whatnot. Um, because our superiors will find out and, you know, that will, you know, hinder us from moving up the ladder. Yeah. And, you know, maybe eventually you just don't get games. So um, we we do a lot, man. Like I said, in the off season we do camps. Um, there's a lot of us that go to camps that aren't cheap just for instruction. Um, and right now with, like I said, with the video capabilities and POTS, um, you know, Ryan Potts go and get clips and stuff. The training is better now than it ever was yeah, um, sure. in our area. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, um, and as you speak on moving up the ladder, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people don't know what refs get paid, but as you move up the ladder and you get to college, now you can make, you know, a couple hundred bucks a night um, yeah. off the game. And, uh, you know, yeah, you so- get up into the ACC or even, you know, even at our level, you know, these refs are making – you know, almost 300 bucks a night, possibly, you know what I mean? So you can actually really make money, uh, uh, referee. Uh, sure. There's big division one conferences and you're looking at a couple thousand a night. Absolutely. So, so, I mean, when you get to that level, I mean, it is a job, but it, it, it's not our main job, you know, like, and that's what people don't realize. Like I'll work eight hours a day and then get off at three thirty four, go to a school ref, don't get home till late and then do it all again the next day. Like most yeah. weeks we're re- Most of us are reffing Monday through Saturday. Absolutely. Um, so, but again, we'll, we still have to find time to watch film and do different things, but I can assure people if we mess up, it, it, it's not that we're trying, we're human. You know, mm-hmm. they're, they're, their kids don't try to miss a shot. You know, they're, they don't try to turn it over on purpose. Just like we, 
we don't try to miss calls or, or get rules right, but we are human as well. Um, and you see it at all the way to the Division One level. I was watching a West Virginia game the other day, Burt Smith, Final Four referee, one of the best college referees. He called a foul because of his angle. He had a bad angle replay. I don't even think the guy was touched. And, and he's a Final Four ref. He'll probably do another Final Four this year. So people mess up. We are human. Um, but the people think that we just get to keep messing up and, you know, we, we don't care or, or Ron doesn't care. He just throws whoever on these high school games or these colleges, you know, signers. They just throw whoever on these games. It's not the case at all. It's yeah, really cool. not. So I want to take this time to um, – to, as a coach, uh, you know, some of the things that the coaches say, and mm -hmm. I want you to, you know, it'll be, it's like, we'll, we'll I'll fire these things off. Right. And you okay. tell me if this is real or uh, if this really happens, or if you guys are even, you know, cognizant of it. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So fouls are, let's just say six to one um, uh, in, in the half, you know, just super lopsided as far as team fouls go. Right. If that's the case throughout a game okay. or a half, do you guys try to even it up? Mm -hmm. I would try. I would, the, I would, I would not. I would not say try. Um, but there's a game management aspect of the game, especially I feel like at the college level, to where there can be a whistle every play, a hundred percent. How do you apply it? You know, differs. You know, maybe the fouls. Some games, some teams are just more physical than others. Um, and you just need to blow your whistle more. So I don't think we look at it and go, oh, my God, the fouls are six to two or, or you know, the, this team's in one and one. We only got two fouls. And then we panic and call quick fouls. But I think it's at especially at the higher levels, it it is a game management thing. Like, look, there's so many rules. This rule book is huge. Um, and there could be a whistle every play to where you don't want to look like you're singling out a team. So, yes, we, we think about it, but I don't think it's like we try and panic to get fouls even, but it's also like, okay, it, should it be six to two? Or are we letting this team play one way and not allowing this team to play the same way? Yeah. Um, so, like, in timeouts and stuff, we, you know, we definitely talk about it. Yeah. Um, but you just want to manage the game and make it – the fair and make it as much even playing field as possible so the best team can win yeah okay cool next one makeup calls is that a real thing <laughs> um <laughs> got you on the, the hot seat right did, now this is a hot did, seat did, was hot. i mean the right answer is no obviously <laughs> um but again like i said there can be a whistle every play yeah if yeah. i know i blow a call you might get one, you might not, um, right depending on, I mean, but the, the goal is to not mess up. Right. Yeah. Um, but you also want to play match, um, mm -hmm. you know, what you're calling. So I will say no. Okay. But um, sometimes you just need to make calls to, to, you know, make sure that you weren't just singling it to team yeah. out. Cool, cool, cool. We don't have to dive any deeper. All right, cool. So uh, my my last one was, um, you know, so as a coach, you know, you work with uh, referees over time, you know what I mean? Years and years and years, you know what I mean? And, and us, we know who's going to ref our game, you know, days before the, the game, right? So they'll send us the referee assignments. Um, and we look down those and in and, and each ref, you, you know, some refs you have a good history with, some refs you have a bad history with. And as coaches, mm -hmm. we look at that um, and sure. you know, we're super, we're superstitious. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you guys look at the games that you're doing and you're like, oh shit, I got to go do text game or dang, I got Kelly church today. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, not in a bad way. Um, I just, I look at the games so I know what type of atmosphere to expect. Mm -hmm. Um, and that way, because we all have a pregame before the game as a crew where, you know, we're going to talk about because we know how these teams play. You know, it's been the same coaches, you know, uh, for the most part around here um, at the college level. You know, you're expected to do some type of scouting report um, before every game. So I, not in a bad way to where it's like, oh, I'm going to have to hear this do tonight or I'm going to 
you know, I'm going to have to, you know, this, but it's more of just being prepared um, and to put us in the best spot as a crew to, if any of these things happen that tend to happen in these games, Mm -hmm. what can we do to prevent it? And what can we do to manage that game if these, you know, situations happen? So, no, I never look at a game like, oh, my God, I got to deal with these two knuckleheads tonight. (laughs) Or, you know, I never I never do that because I I have them as every high school coach or middle school coach, their their number on my phone because I've met them through the rec center or the summer camps or whatnot. And and, and they'll send me plays all throughout the season. I'm not even on the game. They just want their opinion. So, no, not in a bad way, but yes to best prepare the crew and what we could expect in this game with these two coaches or these two teams versus another matchup with two other coaches, you know. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, so let's just talk about you know teeing people up now. Now through your training, um, because some people give more tees than others. So 100%. there's clearly there's clearly <laughs> some um, you know personal uh, you know it's objectiveness. You know what I mean to to where whether you're giving a tech or not. Do you guys get trained on like are there like trigger words like oh it's a t you said the f word what you know what I mean or and 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 if that's not the case if it's not one of those triggers. What is something that – why would somebody give a tech quicker than another rep? To me, I don't like giving them. So if you see me give a technical, just know that whoever it was deserved it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you would be amazed. Like these college conferences and even the WBSSAC wants us to give a, like give them out. Yeah. Like like we – there was an uh, email that was sent from like the PSAC commissioner that, you know, wanted some things cleaned up and – the SSAC, we all have to meet in the year. And there was a list that was automatic things. Mm-hmm. Me, if I hear, you know, certain players jawing, I, I try to talk them through it. Like, hey, clean it up. You know, people get frustrated and, a, you know, F word gets slung. As long as, you know, grandma on the top row didn't hear it, hey, yeah. knock it off, clean it up. Um, and I think a lot of us look at it like that because we understand we're human. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's emotions. Um, and I think a lot of us try to just, like I said, talk coaches through or players through it. Personally, my automatic one is if you call me a cheater. Yeah. And, and I, I hate it. That That yeah. is my I don't give technicals. But if you impl- implicate I'm cheating you or call me a cheater, it's automatic. Automatic um, T. Automatic T yeah, for all. Don't call him a cheater. But, but you some call him a at- cheater. Uh huh. Yeah. And if you want to get under cheater. his skin, if you want to get under Austin's skin, call him a cheater. Yeah. But you will get a tech. Don't, yeah. So don't call me as a, a coach. Every once in a while, we try to get that tech just to, uh, you know, to get our, our team pumped up. So. I think Bill Self did it on Saturday against West Virginia. Yeah. Because he wasn't really like you know animated or anything. He got yeah. one and then went on an eight zero run. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. But some refs and they can look at those you know sheets and. Mm-hmm. Um, or in these meetings and listen, and they're like, hey, they want us to call it. We need to call it. Yeah. Um, I'm more of the person to where I try to use that as last case scenario. Mm-hmm. Can I talk to a player? Can I talk to the coach? Um, or can I talk to two players maybe maybe that, you know, are starting to jaw a little bit? Can I talk them out of it or talk them down so we can keep the game flowing? Mm-hmm. The whole team doesn't get penalized for a stupid mistake. And then, you know, of course, the fans, you know, we're right there. We hear it. They don't yeah. hear it. So they think, you know, oh, what, what's Austin giving the technical now for? Yeah, um, so, so really, we're, we're told to give them out like crazy. Yeah. They, want, they want the game cleaned up. Um, but some refs are like that. Some are, you know, more of the, hey, like, because I, I used to coach, you know, younger kids and, I know that world. I used to play. Mm-hmm. And I think those make the better officials. So yeah. that's why I just try to talk them through. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, um, you know, we, we are up on time, but I do appreciate it. I would like to to add that I know you guys go through your meetings every year and there's points of mm-hmm. emphasis. Um, and those points of emphasis you guys talk to coaches about. And um, just like for us, uh, flopping is a, a big point of emphasis in the college game. Um, and uh, now yeah. it gets to class B tech and things like that. So now it's like, okay, mm-hmm. refs have to decide whether to, whether if it, if it was a flop, then we need to call it. But if it's uh, it's a judgment call again, so where if you do feel like it's a flop, 
then you're going to call a class you're, B tech. And now another, somebody's getting foul shots. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really affecting the game. So now it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, if you're not sure, then you don't call it. You know what I mean? So, um, but you guys do go through a lot of training as points of emphasis every, uh, you know, every year, things like that, that you guys, you know, get evaluated on. Austin, uh, I really do appreciate you uh, jumping on. Uh, yeah, man. It was, it's I'm something leave, that we needed uh, to hear. I'm going to leave my con contact with you. So I'm going to end it on this. Anybody that has ever thought about refing or, you know, is interested or, you know, hasn't because of these parents or whatnot, I think it's getting better. Um, we need people. We really do. Um, so I'm going to leave my contact. Um, I'm going to leave Ron's contact and Ryan Potts. Um, Ron is now in Ranton, so he's going to need Jefferson County rest. Um, I'm helping out the rec center here. And the rec center is a good way to get started so we can get you guys in the class um, and get people, you know, on these school games. So I don't have to do 10 games a week because yeah, sure. I enjoy refing, but, you know, I, I, some nights I like to watch or not do two yeah. games a night. So we need people. So I'm going to leave my contact with you. And uh, if uh, anybody, please reach out to home team. And thank you, um, mm -hmm. home team, for allowing me to come on here and talk and also yeah. to give us access to watch our games more. Um, and to be honest, you know, we're, we're getting better as a board because of these streaming networks. So we appreciate you guys. Um, because again, we want to be better. We want, we want to be the best. Um, and, and home team has definitely played a role in that inner board for, so we can get better. Perfect. Well, text me and then I'll get that stuff on the website for you. You got it. I All right, my man. It. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. man.